Good morning, Trolls Road Church family. So glad to have you join us today. Uh, another beautiful Sunday morning together, and uh, I'm so thankful that you are taking part in our worship service. Looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us today. I'm, I'm looking online, and, and I'm just loving those names and those comments, and it's so great as we gather. And I want to encourage you to, to make your presence known online. And also throughout the service, remember, a well-timed amen, a well-placed hallelujah is always a good thing. If there are scripture verses that, that God has been giving you that have really helped you through this difficult season with all that's going on in our world, uh, I would encourage you to share that and we'll allow that scripture to fill this space online, but also to fill our hearts as we read and, uh, and worship together this morning. Just give a, a few minutes for, for people to continue to gather. I want to say thank you uh, on behalf of all the pastors and the, and the board and the church leadership. You have done such a great job encouraging us, participating uh, to the best of your ability, and, uh, and we're all learning together. Um, I, it's absolutely amazing to see the effort that has gone into trying to figure this out and sort this out. And of course, things are changing all around us. I'll be making some comments later in the service in regards to that, but uh, it's exciting. There's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and we are just praying, trusting God and asking him to lead us and give us wisdom for the days and, and weeks ahead. I um, want to remind you, and you saw it on the slides before you joined, that this Tuesday we have our paint night. And a wonderful opportunity not only for you to enjoy, but uh, if you have friends that enjoy that type of thing, it's a great way to connect them with our church family. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to that event. So uh, there's a few other things coming up in the, in the next few weeks and uh, over the summer, and we'll be telling you more about that as time goes by. Um, let's see who else is uh, coming in. A lot of hearts. A lot of hearts this morning. That's good. A lot of love is in this place. Awesome. Very cool. Um, you know, I, I sometimes I have a, a, a question just to kind of engage and, and, uh, and get you typing and chatting uh, with one another. Um, what I'd like you to do is uh, this morning, um, if, if you're a follower of Jesus, I want you to tell us when you started your spiritual journey. At what point did you become aware that uh, you needed uh, help and you needed forgiveness and salvation and you turned to Jesus for that? Uh, are you someone that, that more recently has, has begun your spiritual journey? Or are you someone from a very young age? Uh, I know for me, I was about four or five years old when I started the journey, and uh, there's been a lot of ups and downs since then, but I look back to a, a very special time of praying with my mom, and, uh, and that was uh, the beginning of something in my life that, that God has faithfully continued to do a work through the Holy Spirit. So why don't you type in there, what are you, when, when did you start your spiritual journey, and continue to say your hellos and, and greeting. We have a special treat for you this morning. Uh, every week we, we try to have some variety with our worship and uh, I'm so thankful for everybody that's been involved from some of my friends or guests or, or this church family. Uh, this week we have some friends, Shane and Emily, uh, that some of you will know. Arbor Season is the name of their duet and uh, they just do a, a wonderful job, some great harmonies and great instrumentation. And uh, I, I reached out to them and invited them to lead worship this morning. Uh, depending on what happens this summer, or at least early next fall, we're hoping to have them up here and, and spending some time with us. But, uh, but until then, uh, I am glad this morning that they can lead us in worship. Just before we go to our time of worship, I wanted to read the beginning of Psalm chapter 1. Uh, to, to, to get our attention fixed on Jesus. It says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or, take, uh, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on the law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. And you know, as we start our service this morning, some of you may feel really dry. 
And this has been a long stretch of time with the, the social isol uh, isolation and, and all of the other things going on in our world and the, the racial tension. And, and there's a lot of things going on. And, and so we want to look to the Lord and have Him refresh us this morning. And so as we open His Word, as we worship, as we focus on Jesus together this morning, His promise is that we will be refreshed and, and we will be like that tree planted by streams of water. So I'm going to invite you now to join us as we worship together. Thank you, Shane and Emily. Take it away. Good morning, everybody. We are super blessed to be with you virtually on your phone or your computer screen. I just love that even in these crazy times, we can still worship together in the spirit. And um, I know that where two or more are gathered in his name, Christ is there. So let's just worship together this morning, however we feel led to, in our homes, with our families.
This is Pastor Caleb. I want to offer you a little bit of an update about some of the great things that are going on here at Trolls Road Church. I know the past couple months have been a bit of a challenge for many of us. We're not able to meet together in the same ways that we're used to. But the good news is the Holy Spirit does not have to play by these rules of space and time like we do. There are some great things happening at Trolls Road right now, and I want to highlight a few of those for you. Starting this Sunday we will be offering some of our own original content for kids and families. This will be a 12-part series that will take us all the way to Labor Day. In this series, we'll be looking at what it means to love God, to love our neighbor, and to love creation. You can find all the information you need in our shared Google Drive or on our website. Even during this period of social distancing, our youth have been continuing our discipleship groups and other ministries via Zoom and other online methods. If you would like more information or have any suggestions for things you'd like to see, please reach out to us. The Bible. The most popular and controversial work of civilization. Sometimes, when we approach the Bible, it feels like 
being dropped into a boat in a chaotic ocean with no tools or maps and we have to somehow get back to shore. And if we're being honest, we might all relate a bit to this metaphor. Now there is a scale of healthy to unhealthy ways to engage with the scriptures, and that is what this workshop, The Word, The Bible Is Not, will explore. We will talk a bit about what the Bible is, a bit about what it is not, and most importantly, the God who is behind it. Hopefully, we can all come away inspired to step into the adventure of God. This is a workshop for scripture novices, experts, lovers, and skeptics. Let's go on this journey together and enter into the story of God. Hopefully, we can all grow along the way. Registration is now open. All right. Well, thank you to Shane and Emily for just a, a beautiful job of leading us this morning. And uh, we're actually going to finish our service off uh, with one of their, their songs uh, later on. But uh, again, thank you for, for leading us. And, and thank you, Pastor Caleb, for that update and giving us a, a little glimpse into uh, what's going on in student ministry and in children's ministry, our Kingdom Kids uh, ministry, as well as our grow groups that I'm very excited about. And uh, if you have questions, there's uh, some great material on the website. And so I would encourage you, you know, as we consider the next few days and weeks and months, as we come out of this social distancing, and as a church, as we look forward to gathering back together, what, what if this was a fresh start for us, a chance to reset? A grow group would be a wonderful way for you to start fresh and to, to reinvigorate your spiritual journey and your passion for scripture. So I highly encourage you to check that out. As you uh, probably are aware, uh, Ontario is moving into, or some parts are already into, a phase two. And uh, in the GTA, we're not quite into phase two in some regards, but churches and, and some other opportunities are opening up. And we had a board meeting on Thursday night to, to discuss this, to pray, to ask good questions. And uh, we have committed to uh, a few things. Um, I was just uh, writing down a few points uh, that we discussed during the meeting. And uh, as Ontario continues the process of reopening, the board and leadership of Trolls Road Church has been in prayerful discussion regarding the when and how of gathering together again for in-person in ministry. Our major concern is how to do ministry safely and effectively. We don't just want to get back together for the sake of getting back together. We want to keep people safe, but we also want to do good ministry. And so we want to make sure the restrictions don't prevent too much of that. We also want to ensure that we are well prepared while protecting the vulnerable in our church family. Uh, the church leadership, the board, and the ministry team are actively making preparations to reopen. And the board has committed to meeting every two weeks to reevaluate. Uh, so we are meeting, we actually have a, a formal board meeting on Tuesday of this week, and then two weeks after that, we're going to meet again. And we will be keeping you as a church family up to date on what we're thinking and decisions we're making. And of course, this is a very fluid situation with lots of things changing. And we understand some churches opened this weekend. Other churches have already said they're gonna wait until September. And so we are just asking God, God, would you, what would you have us at Trolls Road Church do? Uh, I'd like to thank you for your encouragement. As I said at the beginning of the service, thank you for the way in which you're participating, the way that you are giving, the way that you are supporting the ongoing ministry. Ministry, and we invite you to join us in prayer. We want to know what the Lord wants us to do, and we are all enthusiastically anticipating being together again. So we, again, will be keeping you up to date. We actually have a survey we're going to be sending out uh, hopefully early next week and uh, just to get your feedback and some input and uh, are very much excited at a potential light at the end of the tunnel. If you have your Bible, uh, or, or you have a, a device that you're not watching the video on, I want you to look up 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're continuing our series in the Holy Spirit. This is a very significant chapter if we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit because it's on spiritual gifts. 
It's sandwiched between uh, the chapter about the Lord's table and instructions on how to do that properly. And on the other side of it is the famous 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, love is love, love, love. And so in between, not accidentally, we find this passage about spiritual gifts. Now, week one of our series, we looked at the fact that, that the natural habitat of the Holy Spirit is wherever God is doing something new. It's not the only place He resides, but wherever God is doing something new, the Holy Spirit is actively engaged. We looked uh, in the second week of our series at Pentecost and how the Holy Spirit was involved in something very specific and very new that God was doing, and that was giving birth to the church. His gift and His idea, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, given to us to be part of as we uh, try and, and live this life the way that, that we are being led by the Holy Spirit. And that was last week. We talked specifically about what it means to be led by the Holy Spirit and what it looks like when we resist that leading, when we grieve the Holy Spirit, when we frustrate the Holy Spirit, when we resist the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, we want to take a look at spiritual gifts. And this is, uh, as I said, one of the most common topics in relationship to the Holy Spirit. But it's interesting that the gifts themselves are not the most important part of this passage. And I want, to, I want you to keep that in mind as we go throughout uh, and I'll explain and unpack that idea a little bit later. But starting to read in verse 4, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in every one, it is the same God at work. Three times, Paul uses this pattern of different and the same. And this is significant because he is laying out a template for the church here of diversity being a good thing and unity being a good thing. But it's important we understand where the diversity should be and where the unity should be. Notice the diversity is in the kinds of gifts, in the ways we serve, in, in the things that we're working on. These are all actions and behaviors of believers that reflect the uniqueness of the way that we were created, of the way that we were raised, of the culture that we affiliate with, that these different gifts, services, and workings are not only acceptable, they're to be expected and a good thing. This assumes diversity, and I would argue radical diversity, in churches. And you see this in the early church, when it was a very bizarre mixture of people who had some connection initially, had a Jewish heritage. But again, these people spoke different languages, as we discovered in Acts 2. They were from all over the known world. And they would have had different customs. They would have had different ways that they worshipped Yahweh. And their understanding of the Old Testament would have been different. And they came together. How? Well, because they were unified in God in the Holy Spirit. Notice it's Trinitarian, the Spirit, the Lord, and God. And so Father, Son, and Holy Spirit unifies the church. Our unity is not in our behavior. Our unity is not in our expression. Our unity is in God. And it's based on God because the purpose is God's glory and to allow God's work to continue. This is the gospel message. Genesis to Revelation, it's the glory of God being revealed and shared with people. And this unity gives us permission to have differences. It, it legitimizes our diversity. Churches need to reflect this uniqueness, that, that individuals are welcome as individuals, but our unity is around Christ. It's not around economics. Churches should have people that are on all ends, uh, all ends, how about both ends of the spectrum? Uh, it should be people from different political stripes. It, it, should, it should be people collected from different racial backgrounds and ethnic backgrounds and cultural backgrounds. There's too much us and them in our world today, we would all acknowledge, but is our church a safe place where it's not an us and them, it's an us, and we celebrate our diversity. You know, it's interesting, I was reading this week, uh, and in Genesis chapter 4, we get the story of Cain and Abel. And one particular author uh, was, was unpacking the idea that Cain and Abel was, was the first us and them, as Cain looked at Abel as the other, and he took his life. 
so that he could protect the us. What do we do in this regard? Do we, do we seek conformity? Do we expect conformity? Do we teach conformity? Or do we teach unity and celebrate and encourage diversity? And it's something that I've been thinking a lot about, praying about, and asking other pastors and other church leaders about as we are recognizing this unique point in time in our history, in Canada, in North America, in the world. When we get back together, when we are sitting side by side, are we going to sit beside the same people we always sit beside, the people that we're comfortable with, the people that we know the best? Or are we going to venture out to seek to participate in that diversity by getting to know people that we don't know as well? Or, or to connect with people that are different with us? This is significant for us to do church well the way God intended. Look at verse 7. This is a packed theological verse that you could miss if you're rushing to get to the list of spiritual gifts. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. It's a short little verse and it's got a big word. Manifestation. I mean when's the last time you used that in a sentence? But what's going on in this verse is very significant. First of all now each one each one. Everybody has at least one spiritual gift. And I've come across so many people. They're like, no, 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 I, I don't. I'm not gifted. I, I, there's nothing special about me. And it sounds humble, and it sounds like, like we're, we're being modest, but we're actually challenging God and the scriptures, saying it's wrong. What the Bible says is wrong. I'm not gifted. Is it possible if you're someone that, that has said that in the past, that you might be wrong, that you might be gifted and not even realize it. You're not intentionally lying, but maybe God has gifted you, and the issue is you haven't taken the time to explore that gifting or to look for it. That word manifestation, other translations, the evidence of the Holy Spirit, the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Look, it's the Holy Spirit that is the giver of this gift, and so it's important that he gets the credit, and ultimately God gets the glory. I heard a story once, I, I, probably a pastor was telling it, so I can't even vouch for the fact it's a true story, but it's such a funny story. A, a woman sings a solo as a guest in a church, and after the service, all these people came up to her and said, oh, that was beautiful, that was glorious, that was so heavenly. And she was like, no, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it was all God, it was the Holy Spirit working through me. And someone nearby under his breath said, it wasn't that good. Sometimes we forget that, that we do need to give credit to the Holy Spirit, even if it wasn't that good. We need to say, hey, you know what, whatever this was, to the best of my ability, this was for the glory of God, because the gift you have is from the Holy Spirit. Now, this also means that if you're good at something, stop taking credit for it. This is why pride is so ridiculous. The things that we're proud about are not our doing. Well, I worked hard to get my education. Really, did you work hard to get your brain to grow in your head before you were born so that you could learn well? Like, we need to understand that everything we have traces back to God's goodness in our life and the Holy Spirit working. And so I encourage us all to work hard, to partner with God, but let's not have this idea that if I have a large bank account, if I'm a talented athlete, if I'm an intelligent person, if I'm a great leader, that these things somehow we've earned them. We are good at those things because we are predisposed to certain things. We were created by God in a certain way. And we don't need to feel guilty about that. We need to say, God, how do you want me to use these gifts? Because they're for your glory. And ultimately, they are from you. Notice that it is for the common good. It's not for my reputation. If I'm good at something, God has given me that so that I can do something for the benefit of the common good. In Ephesians chapter 4, in a similar passage about spiritual gifts, it says that it's to equip the saints to build up the body. We have this paint night coming up on Tuesday night. I, I'm surprised that they didn't ask me to do it, to lead the paint night, until I stop and think I'm terrible at painting. I am a lousy 
visual artist. It makes sense that we said, who has a natural gifting, a passion, and an ability for paint? And let's use that for, for the encouragement of the church family and an opportunity to connect with people outside our church family. This is what spiritual gifts are for, and ultimately they point back to the gift giver. So what gifts do you have? Do you know what your spiritual gift is? Are you aware of how to use it well? Are you even using it? You know, sometimes we have spiritual gifts, but they're not spiritual gifts until we use them for the common good and for God's glory. And so some of us have spiritual gifts that haven't been made spiritual yet because we're taking the credit for it or we are personally benefiting from it. And this morning, the Holy Spirit might be nudging you or outright challenging you with some of your abilities and gifts and passions to give those to the Lord. Well, inevitably, we get to the actual list of spiritual gifts. In verse 8, to one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one Spirit. Did you notice a theme and a recurring phrase in that passage? That passage is not about the gifts, it's about the Spirit who gives gifts. But it does list a bunch of gifts. Now, maybe like me, you grew up in a, a church setting and you've taken uh, quizzes or, or you've seen charts and graphs and long explanations of all of the spiritual gifts listed in Scripture, and that can be useful. In this passage, it talks about wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, tongues, interpretation, very impressive things, very mysterious things. But it's interesting, in Romans chapter 12, it talks about spiritual gifts, and it mentions prophecy, serving, teaching, encouraging, giving, leading, and mercy. These seem a little more ordinary. And, and it has me asking the question, well, why would the Roman the church in Rome get one list of gifts and the church in Corinth get a different list. And then you throw Ephesians into the mix and there are some, some different gifts and offices and, 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 and um, ministry models that are described there. And they're different again. So, so do we need to collect them all and say this is the list of gifts? Well, at that time, the church in Rome would only have the list in Romans. So why didn't they get the list in Ephesians or the list in Corinthians? Well, it's because Paul never intended to give us an exhaustive list. This is not a comprehensive list. This is to give us an idea of the types of things. Now, he's writing to the church in Corinth, and obviously there was something going on there, and we know this from the rest of the two books written to the church in Corinth. They needed a better understanding of how to navigate these, uh, these wonderful, miraculous, mysterious gifts. Whereas the church in Rome obviously needed more help and encouragement in the area of some of these seemingly more practical gifts. But as I said earlier, the point is not the gift. The point is how we use the gift for whose benefit and who gets the credit. It should also be pointed out that it's, it's not a choice, that, that the Holy Spirit gives us these gifts to use for the community, so we need to ask the Holy Spirit what gift we have and how to use it, and we need to ask the community what gift and how to use it. It's not something we just try and come up with on our own. It's actually very dangerous to try and discern that on our own. And so have you asked God to reveal his gifts? The scriptures paint a picture that you can have different gifts at different times in your life, maybe for a season or maybe for an instance, an event. It can also show that some people have multiple gifts, whereas others may lean into one particular gift. All these things are fine. It's all part of how God designed the body of Christ to work. But we need to be aware of it, and we need to seek others' input, not just God's, but our church family, to help us with this. One of the ways to do that is to be in different groups, like small groups or grow groups, so that we can interact with people about, about Scripture. And that's where these types of conversations happen most naturally. I had the opportunity um, last week, I can't remember which day it was, 
Um, I, I, I like to think I have uh, the spiritual gift of speaking, of preaching, of teaching, uh, and I hope you concur with that, but if you don't, thank you for your grace and your patience. But I'm thinking to myself, I've got, if I've got this gift of preaching, and I use the gift wrong, things go poorly. And so I came into the church to pick something up, and as I was leaving, there was a car in the, in the parking lot, and a lady got out, and she, she asked if I was the pastor, and uh, uh, I, I suggested that, yes, in fact, I, I was the pastor, and she said, God told me to drive around to some different churches and just to pray in parking lots, and I just sensed that God was going to send someone to pray with me. Now, if I immediately say, well, my spiritual gift is preaching, and I sit her down on those benches outside, and I start preaching the sermon that I have here, it's a great sermon. It would, oh, it would have helped her to know her spiritual gift, but it's not the gift of preaching she needed. She needed the gift of mercy. She needed the gift of friendship. She needed the gift of encouragement. And so whether or not I have those gifts, usually in that moment, God gave me that gift because I, I was able to spend time with her and encourage her. And she encouraged me. She had some great things to say and some great words as she's been navigating a challenging season in her life. Listen, don't get too comfortable with the gift that you have. Sometimes that gift, we're comfortable with it because we know how to use it and we can rely on ourself instead of relying on the giver of the gift to help us use it properly. It's also not an excuse, by the way, if you have a spiritual gift, not to do the other things. For instance, if you, if you don't have the gift of generosity, and we could discuss what that actually is, but if you don't have the gift of generosity, it doesn't mean that you don't have to be generous. If you don't have the gift of faith, it doesn't mean that you don't need to demonstrate faith. But some people have this natural ability, and it's a God-given ability to do it in a, a remarkable way, again, that blesses the body of Christ and that, that gives glory to God. What is your gift? Now, this always gets a little tricky. So uh, we're actually going to have a, a discussion, and by we, I mean you, uh, in your homes. I want you to think about this. Your gift could be something that's listed here in Corinthians. It could be something listed, listed in Romans or Ephesians. But I want you to expand your understanding of spiritual gifts to the things that you have a, a passion for, to the things that you have an ability for, to a, a, a natural gift that you have. And I want you to, to ask the person beside you or maybe tell them what you think your gift is and get their feedback or ask them what they think your gift is. So some of you are in homes with your family right now or maybe you're with a friend or a spouse. Why don't you have that conversation? If you are in a room by yourself right now, then why don't you ask God and say, God, I think my spiritual gifts might be these things, but would you help me discern that? Why don't you just take a minute and do that? Be creative. Maybe you'll be surprised at what someone that you've been married to for several years says. You know what? I think you have this spiritual gift. How awesome would that be? You realize God gave you the passion that you have. If you're passionate about cooking, if you're passionate about sports, if you're passionate about reading, how would that be a spiritual gift? a way to encourage the body of Christ and a, and a way to give glory to God. You know, these days, uh, tech is very important. Technology, being able to use the, the internet. Maybe you have a, a spiritual gift of technology. Uh, how, how could you use that? I, I'm in a room with two other people right now that have a much higher gifting in technology than I do, and that's why I'm on this side of the camera. Maybe you have a, a passion for justice, and right now your, your mind is spinning and your heart is churning as you see the injustice in our world. You know, I think people with a, a spiritual gift of justice right now are crucial for the next steps for us as a church family. What's your gift? What are you passionate about? Now, maybe you're a little shy, uh, but it's not bragging to say, I think this is my gift, or someone else has said this is my gift. And again, it's part of the sorting out and discerning process. If, if you feel comfortable, why don't you put out on, on the comment section what you think your gift is? Uh, again, there's no pressure, but it might be a wonderful way for someone to say, I need someone with that gift, or I have an idea that would mesh with that gift. Or if you know the person, you can affirm that and say, yeah, I totally see that gift in you. 
why don't you take a minute and you could be typing, I'll keep talking, and, uh, and let's continue to listen to the Holy Spirit. But we're, we're wrapping up now, and we get to verse 11 and 12. It says, all these are the work of the one and same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. You know, the, the Holy Spirit coordinates all of this. And, and this means that we shouldn't be jealous of other people's gifts. Sometimes I listen to a podcast or I read a book or, or I, I see a preacher and I'm like, oh, I wish I could preach like that or I, I wish I could communicate like that. But, but God didn't give me that ability. So I can certainly develop my skills and my, uh, you know, my practice, but I shouldn't be jealous. I should be celebrating that I can benefit from that person's spiritual gift, and I should be thanking God that that gift is being used for His glory. You know, the idea that the Spirit coordinates all of this frees us to celebrate others' gifts, even if their gifts seem a little more impressive than the ones that we have. We can celebrate that because we understand it's a puzzle, and their piece is significant to making the puzzle complete. But also it's significant that, that we understand the Holy Spirit has a plan. That he's coordinating all this because there is a master plan. We are intended to play our part. And so when you're not part of the church family actively participating, we miss you because there is something that you offer that no one else can provide because God created you unique and has spiritually gifted you to benefit the body of Christ in a way that no one else can. And so we need you to participate. And for you to spiritually grow properly, you need to be part of the body of Christ because other people have been given gifts to bless you that you need for your journey. This is what the Holy Spirit does when he coordinates all of these things. And so we need to understand uh, that, that, that God has a plan for others, that God has a plan for us, but God also has a plan for the church. You know, it's interesting, in Romans chapter 12, um, this actually is our theme verse, therefore uh, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Then in verse 2, you all know this verse, uh, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That was our verse last year. But the second part of the verse says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In other words, when we allow the Holy Spirit to transform us, then we can discern what the Holy Spirit's plan is, not just for us, but for our church and our world. Again, I've referenced this in previous Sundays, but the, the Bible says that the world is groaning and, and that, that it's longing for redemption. And the Holy Spirit is not just seeking to, to renew people, all of creation is being redeemed. And when we use our gifts and when we give God the glory, that is part of the redemption process. And that is the call of the church. And we can only do it when we're unified in the name of Jesus, but diversified in our gifting, in our experience, in our perspective. And God gets all the glory. And it's God's plan. The Holy Spirit is coordinating this plan in our lives, in our church, and in our world. And we are invited to participate using the gifts that he has given us. We need to be ready. When we gather back together face to face, not that we can't do anything until then, but we have a remarkable opportunity, Charles Road Church, to bless our community to, to bring about gospel hope, this idea of shalom, of peace. We need to be ready so that we can pray that prayer. Your will be done. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And it starts in your life, in my life. And then it, it continues in the life of the church here at Charles Road and out into the community of Curtis and to the entire world. And so are you ready to do your part and let the Holy Spirit lead you using the gifts he has given you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much 
for this incredible gift of the church. It was your idea. It was your blessing. It is the body of Christ. It is the bride of Christ. The, the Bible even makes it clear that Jesus is not coming back for individuals. He's coming back for his bride, for the church, for this group of believers that are unified in Jesus' name, but so diverse, every tribe, tongue, and nation that will declare his praises one day. We thank you that you have also given us the Holy Spirit to be active in our church, to be active in our lives, to coordinate your plan of redemption. And I pray that we not only receive those gifts and understand those gifts, but we use them well and thoughtfully and powerfully, not in our own ability, but in the ability of the one who gave us these gifts. And Lord, we also pray for our world. Our world is hurting. Our, our world is demonstrating the, the racial wounds that run deep. Our, our world is, is recognizing that, that this, this concept of peace and unity is such a thin veneer, and underneath the reality is something very desperate. God, might we be people of peace, people of shalom as Christians, as Christ followers. And I pray that your word of peace and your gospel would go out and bring about healing and reconciliation. I pray also for the continued challenges that COVID-19 presents, both here in our, our country and in our region, but also around the world. Lord, this has been uh, an unprecedented time. And in, in some ways, it's been a, a really exciting opportunity to reset and start fresh in some areas. But in other ways, it's been devastating as, as people have lost loved ones, as, as people have missed loved ones and have been separated from them. And, and whether people have been in the hospital or in long-term care facilities, perhaps in, in uh, distant places where they can't get to one another to celebrate or to grieve together. God, we just pray that as we come out of this season of COVID, this pandemic, that you would bring about the restoration of relationships, that you would bring about health in areas where there is struggling mental health, that there would be physical health in areas where there is struggling, um, uh, struggling physical health. But also, Lord, we pray for spiritual health in, in areas where there has been spiritual darkness for so long, even here in Canada, even here in Curtis. We also recognize the political landscape that is so polarized here in Canada, especially, uh, but also in the United States. And, and we're seeing that playing out on the world stage. Oh God, again, you have given us this, this gift of peace to offer to the world. And so I pray that you would make us wise to know how to engage in politics without getting caught up in the trappings and the, the, the dangers and the, uh, the misdirection that sometimes politics can bring about. Lord, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and I pray that we would remember that at all times, and, and God, that our support and loyalty ultimately would be to you. We pray for our church family. We pray for the leaders in our church, that you would give us wisdom. We pray for the board meeting on Tuesday night that we would, uh, again, hear from your spirit and understand the direction that you would have us go. We pray for those in our church family who are suffering physically, those that are battling illness and disease, who are going for tests and surgeries. And Lord, I just ask that you would bring comfort to those people and those families and that you would bring healing as the great physician. And we pray for those people that are lonely today and who are desperate to be back together with their brothers and sisters in Christ. I know it's soon, but until then, Holy Spirit, you are the comforter. Would you comfort? And finally, we want to pray for the mission of Trolls Road Church. You have called us and placed us here in Curtis for a purpose. You have gifted us. Would we understand and use those gifts to fulfill the mission and to bring you glory here in Curtis and around the world? And for this time that we have spent together, might we leave not only encouraged, but recommitted to allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and work through us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, my friends, for joining us today. 
and I trust that you have a, a great week. Again, we will keep you posted on what's going on and, and some of the decisions that we're making. Uh, we don't want to rush into anything, but we are so excited about being back together. So uh, we appreciate your prayers that we do this well. I want to thank uh, all of you for participating and thank all of the leaders in our church that are actively at work, the other pastors and ministry leaders as we are preparing even now for what the summer will look like and next fall. And, and there's a lot of excitement around that. Again, want to remind you about our paint night on Tuesday night. All the information is on our, on our website or, or on Facebook, so you can check that out. And uh, finally, uh, a shout out and a thanks to Shane and Emily. Arbor season, you can find them online. As we conclude our service, our, our benediction will be this great song uh, that they're gonna perform for us now. So thank you again for joining us. God bless you. Have a great week and go in peace.